Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode. Keeping hydrated, sticking on my New Year's resolution goals, but to this video, it's all about the 13 inch MacBook Pro. You know that it just came out the other day, but the biggest question I always get, probably throughout the year, a lot of my friends, I get DMs all the time on Instagram, Twitter, people ask, should you get the 13 inch MacBook Pro? This one? Hard to tell them apart, or the 13 inch MacBook Air. They are very, very similar, and in this video, we'll kind of compare, and I'll give you my recommendation on which device you should grab. And off the bat, you can already tell, unless you've got laser eyesight, it is very hard to decipher which device is which. You've got the naming on the inside, but who can actually see that? And unless you look at the keyboard, slash I would say touch bar, which you see on the MacBook Pro. I think that's been around now since 2016. It changes with every app you use. You either love or hate it, it's fully digital. But over on the MacBook Air, we have all of the hard function keys. We've got the exact same keyboard and button mechanisms now. We've gone away from the scissor switches, which has given Apple so many problems in the past. The same force touch trackpad, great speakers, and of course, touch ID on both devices. When you close them, this is where you start to see the actual physical differences, and that's of course with the design. You get the name MacBook Air because it's super light and weighs like an air. It comes in right around 2.8 pounds, and that's the benefit of having the Air. It's super lightweight, it's easier to travel with, it fits easier into a backpack, whereas the 13-inch MacBook Pro, noticeably heavier. And the last physical differences are the I.O. or the ports. So you've got two USB-C ports and of course the headphone jack on the MacBook Air. And technically, you could also have two USB-C ports on the MacBook Pro. They did launch, I guess, two different models. Not too many people know about that. The first being the entry level. That does cost $12.99. You get the two ports, but more importantly, it's an older processor, the eighth gen Intel Core chipsets. And if that $12, $1,300 is your budget or price range, Range, I would honestly recommend to go for the MacBook Air. You get a faster and newer processor, you spec that with a quad core and of course 16 gigs of RAM, that comes to $12.99, so it's the exact same price. And for the 90 to 95% of you people out there that watch these videos, the MacBook Air is more than enough of a device for your day-to-day -day needs. So if you're a student needing it for school, typing out essays, if you're a business professional, need it for PowerPoint, checking the web, Media consumption, editing your occasional video, and doing some light work on Photoshop, the MacBook Air handles that quite easily. I've managed to edit 4K videos on the Air. It does bog down a bit in the timelines, it takes longer to process, but if you really need something a bit more powerful, that's when you really look at the benchmark comparisons. That's where the multi-core score over on the MacBook Pro shines. So if you are into heavy video work, I'm talking about 4K stuff, if you're looking at heavier Photoshop files, if you want to even dabble with gaming, I know that Macs aren't as good as PCs, I can see all the PC Master Race people chirping in, this does it better than the Air. But in that case, you do need to grab at least the base mid-spec, if that makes sense. So that's my recommended spec for this. That's the 10th gen quad-core i5. It comes stocked with 16 gigs of RAM. If you can afford to spend that extra 400 bucks for 32 gigs, you future-proof your device. You'll get 512 gigs of storage. Anything else, grab an SSD. It's way cheaper. And of course, the four USB-C ports. And even though the 13 inch doesn't have a dedicated video card or VRAM like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I was pleasantly surprised by the Intel Iris Plus graphics. So my last unboxing video of this device, I edited on this machine. I'm personally gonna stick with my 16 inch. It has more VRAM, it's got a larger display, and obviously I've dropped way more coin on it. So this would be a downgrade for me, but don't take anything away from the 13 inch. I just wish we saw that 14 inch refresh that was rumored, knocking on a bit of wood that we still get it by the end of 2020. Let's keep our fingers crossed. And other than that, the displays are almost identical. We do have a slightly brighter panel over on the MacBook Pro, so 500 nits versus 400. The MacBook Pro also has a wider color gamut, but unless you have both devices side by side, it's very hard to tell between both. Both devices, you're looking at all day battery life around 10 hours, that obviously depends on what you do. If you are hardcore video editing, that will drastically reduce that. If you're looking for the most bang for your buck, the MacBook Air is my clear choice, so recommended to most students, people that are looking to save the most amount of money. But yeah, that was my comparison and recommendation for the 2020 13 inch lineup of MacBook models. Like I mentioned, it's one of the most frequent questions that I get. Hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or vlogs. Peace.